Hello and welcome to something a little bit different. This is just a nice quick video. I wanted to share this tool that I've come across recently. It's by no means a new tool. It's been around for at least a few years, but it's new to me and I figured if I didn't know about it, there's a good chance that some other people might not have known about it and I wanted to share it. And also just in case it was something that people might think about my tiny little channel. This is not a sponsored video or anything. Nobody is cajoling me to share this video. It's just, I think this is a really cool tool and I wanted to share. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to how you can get better looking textures in your Unity games for free, basically. And we're not talking about going onto the asset store and finding a free texture asset, which you can absolutely do. But if you're looking for free options, then you're a bit more limited. And this method will translate nicely. For example, if you found a free model on the Unity asset store, you could always extract the textures from that model and run it through this process and improve the textures that way. Anyway, without further ado, we'll get started. I'm using the standard Unity renderer, but there's no reason this wouldn't work in the universal or high definition pipeline as well. You'd just be going through the shader graph system rather than the way it's done here. So the first thing we're going to do is make something that we can actually put our texture onto. So I'm going to go with a plane and we'll just slap it down there in the middle. And then I will also just drag the camera a bit closer just so we can see. And I'll tilt him down a little bit and that's fine. Most of what we're going to be doing is outside of Unity anyway. So next up we need a texture and I am going to get one from here, from 3djungle.net. Now I'm by no means saying that this is the best place to get free textures. This is just the website that I use when I need textures. Plenty of other places. I mean, the unit asset store itself has plenty of free textures. Find your textures wherever you want. I'm going to use this one here because it's a nice bumpy texture and that's kind of what we want. So I will download that and get it into Unity. I've just dropped it in the main asset window. I'm not, I'm not going to bother with the uh, material folders and stuff for now because we're just doing this one thing. It doesn't need to be a properly laid out project. But the next thing we're going to do is create a material, obviously, and it's just going to be a regular material, which... I will call floor. And then if we go into that material, we've got our albedo setting here. That's where this wants to go. And that gives us our floor. And then we can drag that material onto here. And yeah, there we have it. We've got a floor. But it's not a very interesting looking floor. And it's kind of smooth, which is a bit weird. One second, I'm just going to turn auto generate lighting back on. I have it off usually because when you've got more complicated projects, it can take ages. But for this, it shouldn't be a problem because it's just one light and one floor. So there we go. We've got our floor. It's a bit bland looking and it's very flat, which obviously is not ideal. We'll just turn the smoothness down. So let's make it more interesting. So this is the program that I've recently discovered and I'm sure plenty of you are aware of it but for those that aren't this is called Materialize. It's a free application and it helps you make amazing looking textures basically. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull our rock texture or our stony floor texture into here and make it look more impressive. It's not immediately obvious what you do. I mean, you've got all these these boxes up here, the height map, diffuse map, normal map. That's all fairly straightforward. What isn't straightforward, to me at least, is how you do anything with it. So the first thing we're going to do is we need to start with our diffuse map and we click O here for open. So we'll click open that and then I'm going to navigate to where I stored my uh, texture and open it up. So there we go. We've got our texture in here and we can can move it around a bit and as within Unity, it's a bit flat. So let's make it less flat. You can click edit and you can mess around with settings in here. This setting at the top here, diffuse reveal slider, there's I think there's a reveal slider on each one of these, and basically you can switch you can't really tell with it the settings it's got at the minute, but you can switch between what it used to look like and what it looks like after the settings. So if I mess with some settings now, let's go with... Oh, there, there, okay, there's some contrast there. So now that I've changed some settings, I don't know if you can see that, but changing the reveal changes how much of it is covered by the new settings. So right now it's about half and half. The left is what it used to look like, the right is what it looks like now. And you can see that the changes have sort of added contrast. It's made it look a bit more grainy and gritty, which you might want, you might not. This is where subjectiveness comes into play. And obviously we can make it completely gray if we wanted. You can mess with the bias and so on. But we're not going to bother with that, so I'm just going to close this one. What we are going to do is we're going to create a height map. So let's go into here, click create. We can see the height map as it is now, and we can mess with the settings here. Let's see, that would make it everything a depression, rather all the little stones would be like going in rather than sticking up, but obviously we don't want that. So I think about there, no, it's probably a bit much. About there, and make it smooth it out a little bit. We don't want it to look too jaggedy. Set that as height map. And now if we click show full material, we can see that we have height. It won't look exactly like this in Unity because the Unity render engine doesn't work exactly the same as whatever renderer they're using here, but you get an idea. So we've got a height map now. To be honest, it's a little bit much. So maybe I'll just bring it down a little bit. 
That's a bit better, just tone it down a little bit. So we'll go to normal map next. We all know what a normal map is. And we can change the angular intensity and everything. And let's go about there. And we'll set that as the normal map. For some reason on normal map, I've noticed that the reveal slider doesn't do anything. And then we'll put show full material. Now we've got normals as well as height. It's already starting to look a lot more realistic. Metallic map, we're not, I'll show you metallic map, but we're not going to use that on this one. But yeah, so you could set your metallic map and then you give you stones sort of metallic this would be good if you were having rain like you could apply a metallic map to your material as the rain starts falling and it makes it look wetter but we will clear that for now i'm not going to use that one smoothness map again just uh more detail being added to it so let's bring the high pass down a little bit and make it a little bit smoother and the blur up a little bit I think something like that. And then edge map, I'm not really going to mess around with the edge map much, but we'll just turn the contrast up a little bit. And then finally, the ambient occlusion map. Again, I'm not going to mess with this one too much because I won't begin to pretend to understand how to make a decent ambient occlusion map. Lighting is far from my strong suit, but yeah, let's just set that as it is and show full material. And ooh, that's made it a bit, a bit gritty. But we'll leave it as it is, it's, it's fine. Uh, we're, I'm just demonstrating the process here. So now if we go to save project, and we should already be in the assets folder here, so I'm just going to save it as, I'm going to save it as ground, because I think I saved it as, the material as floor. And then we go back into Unity, we should find we've got a bunch of textures. There we go, it's, it's given us all our textures. So let's open up our material again, drag in our new diffuse material, or I'm pretty sure that should be identical because we didn't change anything. And we're actually going to change this to specular so that we can use the specular map which will be the smoothness map and then obviously we've got our normal our height map our occlusion map and I think detail is edge but I could be wrong on I'm not 100% sure about that one but as you can see we've already got a much more sort of realistic looking floor and you can mess with these settings like you can make the height map stick up more and uh, some, something's a bit weird it might be the specular map is it yeah, the specular maps making it uh, the smoothness sorry is making it look a little bit weird so i'll just tone that down a little bit and obviously you can mess with the normal map as well we'll just create another material call that old floor and drag just the diffuse in to just give you an idea of the contrast between the two. I've actually got my camera in the wrong place to see the contrast here, so let me just move that a second. So as you can see, the texture on the left has got all of the specular map and the height map and everything applied to it, and it's easier to zoom around in the scene view than it is in the game view. And the one on the left, on the right, sorry, is just a regular old texture with nothing going for it. You could raise the normal map to ridiculous proportions if you so wished and just to highlight the real difference because it's, it's an easy thing to overlook but lighting is the single biggest thing that makes a difference like you can make an amazing looking game with just good lighting and you can also make a terrible looking game with great textures so it's the lighting makes a huge difference so I, just to show that point i've just rotated the direct light a little bit and you can see the texture on the left looks almost real at this point whereas the one on the right is just a flat picture so yeah yeah, that's that's the end of this little mini tutorial thing whatever we're gonna call it like i say it's it's just a little thing that i wanted to share with you guys i hope you enjoyed it and i do sort of plan to do more stuff like this but if you know of a, a cool little gadget or a cool little piece of software that is worth sharing let me know drop it in the comments send me it on the let me know on the discord send me a tweet anything yeah if it's if it's something that i think is a really useful tool i will do another one of these little videos on it so that's the end of the video i won't dwell too long on thanking everyone because of how short this video is but special thanks to our patreons as always extra special thanks to dave maldine gabriel white julio monteiro sorry again julio michael gulak professor dj and reg reed who are the top level patreon supporters you guys are amazing and everyone else all the other patreon supporters all the people in discord if you're liking subscribing anything like that you are what keeps this channel going leave a comment let me know what you think let me know if you use this software already and uh, i will see you for the next video Bye bye